Dr. Alan Leica here, and I'd like to welcome you to How to Live a Fantastic Life show, where we will be discussing the important aspects of your life. We hope to inspire you to live the best life you can. Get out of your comfort zone and explore the awesome world around you. Break through your barriers. Take inspired action. Use the difficulties in your life to achieve the best version of you. The Secrets to Living a Fantastic Life is an amazing read. If this book doesn't pick you up to sing above the crowd, I will be amazed. What great things do you imagine for yourself? Do you know what's holding you back? Dr. Alan Leica, a prominent physician, has taken what he's learned from being handed a diagnosis of his pending death and turned that insight out from inside his heart and mind out to you. You may have heard the idea, it's not what happens to me, it's what I do with it. Dr. Leica explodes this idea, this way of thinking and being into 13 golden pearls for you to take one by one, practice and string together like a necklace you will wear to guide you through life's challenges like metal that is tempered by extreme elements, so are we. Dr. Leica will show you how to turn terrible things into real and practical new ways to lead your life. Believe it and believe in yourself. The Secrets to Living a Fantastic Life is an amazing book. Amazing. Get your copy today at Amazon. Ladies and gentlemen, today I have another special guest. His name is Charles Chadwick, Jr., and he is a very special man, and he's got two degrees, but he also learned a trade before going to college. Learning a trade, according to Charles, adds a very valuable thing to a person in this competitive job market. His trade experience employment even helped him pay off his student loans. Uh, Charles' journey was completely unconscious, but he gained some life lessons. He now writes books and is also helping to mentor people along the path that he took. So welcome, Charles. Thanks for having me. It's really a, a appreciation for having me, man. Thank you. So why don't you tell everybody where you're from? Okay. Originally born and raised from North Carolina, a little town called Jacksonville, and it's home of Camp Lejeune Marine Corps Base. No affiliation with the military, but my family were both sharecroppers and farmers on my mom and dad's side, so we have a lot of farmland here. Well, that, that's cool. And, and I'm sure that uh, there's a lot of great crops grown there. And uh, you uh, learned that as your background. And you were sort of driven to go to college. Tell me about that experience. Uh, exactly. Uh, when you say driven, uh, th that's, the, that's the key word. More, I could say more like programming or brainwashing <laughs> to go to college. And I would say, as I look back over my life, you know, I really didn't hear that college push until high school, you know, middle school on a scale one to 10 with 10 being the highest and one the lowest, maybe in middle school, they only pushed it maybe three out of 10, but high school, they made it seem like it was a 10 out of 10 choice that college guarantees success. And that's all I heard throughout high school was go to college, go to college. Your senior year, make sure you have the prerequisite classes that allow you to go to college. I think I graduated in 2003 and it was like two foreign languages. You had to get past Algebra 1 and Algebra 1B, trigonometry and X amount of science. But college, 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 that's all I heard. And it, it, it felt like if you had any other choice, they said you were wrong and you need college for everything. Uh, even if you want it to be... Uh, a class clown or, or a towel guy. I'll never forget a guy said, I want to lay towel and I don't need college. And the teacher said, yes, you do, because you wouldn't know the square footage of the room, how many towels to buy and all that other stuff. So yeah, driven is the right word, especially in America. I would say in high school, that's all I heard. Even if you say you wanted to be a professional athlete, they love to throw that curve. Of, oh, what if you get hurt? You're still going to need college. Go to college first then sign a million dollar contract, you know? I hear you. 
you you yeah. certainly listened because you not only got one degree, you got two degrees. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, right after high school, as most case in America, it's rare. I'm not saying it don't happen, but it's rare you find an 18 year old that knows exactly who they are and what they want to be. So I took a year off of high school, to be honest. I hated school. I feel like personally, after I learned how to read, write, do the basic math, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, I felt like I didn't learn anything else. So I was bored. So as soon as I graduated from high school in 2003, I took one whole year off and just worked at uh, the local church's chicken here in Jackson, North Carolina. After working a year and kind of figuring some things out along the life journey, say, hey, maybe this ain't for me. I'm ready to now. I, I want something more, which I guess could be tied to success. And the one thing that always rang back in my head was those teachers say go to college. So I went to my community college first, but I took one year off of high school. So there was no pressure on me. And I my choice to go was 100% mine after that, taking that year off. And I ended up getting an associate's degree in electronic servicing. While I was there doing electronic servicing, a lot of people may not know, my dad had a plumbing business. So since I was this little, I've always helped my dad with the plumbing business. But after taking that year off of high school and working with him, I think that kind of influenced me as well to go to college because plumbing, it, and you're in the trade industry, you're working with your hands and feet versus just sitting in a classroom trying to obtain a degree. So I, I finished the electronic servicing in two, from 2004 to 2006, and then I transferred to a college called Lees McRae College out of Banner Elk, North Carolina, and I went for my bachelor's in mass media communication. Now, the catch there, I know you said I had two degrees. The first one, I really wanted it. But the second one, the only reason I went to that school is because they gave me a chance to play basketball. I wasn't good as far as like a Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, but I was like a Dennis Rodman. I always got the rebounds and set the screens. And along this pathway of life, thinking about what was my host happiest time. And I thought about when I played basketball in high school. So I got back in shape, prepared for this basketball trial. I didn't make it, but that was the reason why I went on to the university. I thought I could sneak in and play basketball as I'm figuring out my life path. Well, and, and from there, you, you still did not think that an academic or, or into those fields weren't the right path for you. What made you think that? I would say it wasn't what I was thinking, but more so what I was feeling on the internal side. You know, there, there's sometimes we can be doing something, even if it seems right, you just know deep down in your, your soul, or we can say energy you know that you just didn't feel complete as I was still trying to find myself through that journey and process. But when you're in high school and you're looking up to teachers or parents and all what they say with those big goggly eyes, go to college, don't be like me. I'm working a job. I don't want to work. Go to college. That's all I heard was go to college, go to college and everything will be all right. And then you looked back at your, your work that you did with your dad and mm -hmm. said, maybe plumbing's for me. And then you took some trade school. Is that right? Yes, sir. While I was pursuing my electronic servicing associate's degree at the community college, I actually took plumbing fundamentals, electrical wiring fundamentals, blueprint, blueprint reading. I did some uh, EPA and refrigeration certification. I did a paint and lead renovation certification. And it was kind of interesting. With trays, I start to know it was fun because I'm using my mind to figure out how to fix or repair or install something new. So as I began to get older, I had a new uh, yearning for learning. And I thought about the trade industry. You know, you can work your own hours. You don't have to, per se, uh, the only person that's big brother you have to look up to is the IRS when you pay taxes. Other than that, if you own your own business, you really don't answer to nobody but the government or the inspector of a job site. One day, I'll teach chemistry to kids. I'm going to be an architect. My dream is to be a chef. This is a world of possibilities, a world in which people who put their minds to something can really make a difference. 
My goal is to help the environment. Someday I'll find a cure for cancer. At the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Federal Student Aid, we believe that aspiring minds can achieve anything. So we dedicate ourselves to making sure everyone has an opportunity to go to college. Each year, we provide more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds, making higher education possible for anyone at any stage of life. I can go back to college. I can change careers. I can make a difference. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about Money for College at studentaid.gov. They have your eyes. They have your ears. They have your smile. Now all they need is a little more of your time. Make a difference in your child's life, because anyone can be a father. It takes time to be a dad. That, that is certainly liberating for, for a person, knowing that they can do that. Now, the, I think a lot of people are afraid to go into trades because they're afraid of, of being their own boss and working in that industry where they might have a hard time finding work. Are those realistic fears? I can understand it if a person isn't confident. I mean, it, take, it takes a, a while for a person to get confident. And this is something even deeper, you know, parenting. If somebody grew up in a home where your parents didn't encourage you to any, do anything and they put their own fears on you, then a person might have a hard time. What I kind of see is that, to me, trade industry workers have been labeled as blue collar. They're uneducated. You know, the college is this, you know, the almighty and all this. But after this pandemic, <laughs> I could tell you right now that uh, the trade industry did not miss any work. They probably made more money than they could have ever because in a pandemic, uh, even with gas prices high, if your toilet or your electrical receptacle don't work, you're going to need a plumber or electrician. And that's facts. Compared to if you're a history major while the schools was closed, a teacher probably could have got laid off during this time period. So I'm, I, what I'm really learning is that people go to college and they can graduate with a lifetime worth of debt and bills. But when you go to the trade industry, you walk away or what you're walking into is a lifetime worth of skills, earning skills that will allow you to work during a pandemic when gas prices are high. It's just an essential job, really the trades, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I have several family members that have uh, gone into the trades and prospered in it. Now, they've sometimes had to take work that wasn't right in their own community. Sometimes they've had to travel for the work, but there was always work available for people that wanted it. Exactly. And you do not have to wait in line. Again, I'm visiting from Hawaii where I work in the construction security sector, and my dad is still operating this business. It's tough to find people who want to work, but even right now, uh, I left a plumbing site today to come here for the podcast, and we're finishing a brand new house. And I guess, too, with millennials, you know, you can go to college and make a lot of money, but the bottom line is the trades is tied to everything. So you, I don't have any data, but millennials, if you're going to own a home, that degree might make you the money to buy it, but you also have to maintain a home. And that's where the trade industry comes in for sure. New yeah. construction is booming here in North Carolina. Well, yes. And, you know, I'm most familiar with the electrical trades, but the plumbing trades certainly are busy. And almost any trade that's involved in the construction industry is, is still very busy. Exactly. And even too, a lot of people don't notice, and I'm not talking politics, but facts, you know, uh, under Biden, you know, build back a better of America. And my thing is going green too. A lot of people don't understand the water quality in the United States is not as good as it wants. And we're going to need plumbers. And if we're supposedly going to electric cars, those charging stations are going to need some electricians to put them in. So no matter how much technology we have, it's still tied to the trade industry to get it done. Yeah, that's pretty significant. And I think you're making a good uh, 
case for it. I've also read statistics on the constructions industries, and they say that there's a shortage currently, and that's going to even escalate to yep. like 40 or 80% over the next 10 years. Yes. And uh, I have some too, you know, approximately 40% of college students drop out without a degree. Those who complete their degree, 64% take more than four years to graduate and they rack up more debt. Here's what's funny in the trade school. Less than 2% of people drop out of trade schools and the longest periods of education is two years. And with the trade, again, my thing is on your first day without any skills, the first day you get paid whether you're you're following an electrician, you're following a plumber, and you're just watching them work to start learning. So that's what I look at the trade industry compared to college. You know, people are studying and all these philosophies and concepts. Um, but with the trade industry, you're going to start making money right away. And you're right, with the baby boomer generation, my dad is pushing on seven, almost 70, and he is still wide open. He can't find anybody to work, you know? So... If a young person right now was really thinking, or parents, and you understand business with supply and demand, right now, we have this many people in college, but this many people in trades. Yeah. They're not going to stop building houses. The trade industry is about to come over these college degrees shortly. And as you said, in the next years to come with the shortage, the trade industry is going to be the big money maker and player. You know, and, and with that, uh, you know, I, I think we go through periods of what I call boost and, and bust. Yeah. And certainly there are periods when there's recessions and mm -hmm. things like that. But I still would argue that if a person's well trained, even during the recessions, they're live, they're able to work if they want to work. Yes. Um, again, I, I was deemed essential where I was at. I, I bought some a chess set, I've never learned to play. I said, hey, they about to send us home. And no, because construction doesn't stop on uh, government contracts or even just residential. You know, people are needing homes and there's shortages everywhere on homes because of the building supply. So now, you know, some of the older homes are selling more than what they would traditionally be worth because of supply and demand. Yeah. And the other thing about the older homes they all need maintenance as well. Exactly. They all need to be fixed. So yeah. if a house are 40, 50 years old, it needs new plumbing. It needs a new roof. It needs new stuff. So it never stops. Yes, and it never stops. And uh, one philosophy that I, I came up with, I'm a man of quotes, and I said, I believe now we might need a duality mentality for the economy. Just don't stop with a degree. Look into the trade industry. Because my thing is this. Millennials are going to be homeowners one day. And if they don't know these skills, it still costs money. And this is where the degree will not help you. So if you had like a dual citizenship, far as having a degree like me, two degrees and the trades, I'm well universe where if I want to stop this trade work, I can go pick up a regular job with my degrees. Or if I want to go into trade industry, I'm already there. And one interesting thing I've learned it don't cost much to start a business in the trades. If, if a young person, for example, in my field wanted to be a plumber, all they would have to do is uh, spend about two to four years under a licensed plumber. You get the hours that's required. You show some pay stubs. And in my state of North Carolina, all you have to do is have those requirements, the hours up under a licensed plumber, and show some pay stubs to show that you actually work those hours. Take a test. And you boom, bada, boom, bada, bing, you're a licensed plumber. You could buy a used van for $2,000. You can go to Lowe's, spend 500 in tools. And back in the day, I'm a little bit older now. That Maybe the next people don't know about the yellow page. I was going to say advertising the yellow pages, but there's no more phone books. Maybe do some Facebook marketing ads and Instagram ads. And hey, you have a plumbing business or electric business. Are you tired of feeling frustrated, unfulfilled, and constantly telling yourself that things will get better someday? Perhaps you have this burning feeling of anxiety like you should be doing something. Today, that can all change. 
Dr. Alan Stephen Leica has coached thousands just like yourself to achieve the success you've always dreamed of. It's time to fully own your dreams and let go of those stories that seem to be stopping you from bringing those dreams to life. You can achieve your most ambitious goals and create the life you truly love. Ordinary people are now doing this extraordinary thing. Dr. Leica will help you identify your purpose and make your dreams come to life. It's that simple. Your bright future is ready for you to claim it. All you need is to get clear on what you really want. The universe will take care of the rest, and Dr. Leica will show you how to use the universal law of attraction to make this happen. Say goodbye to last year and get the success you've always dreamed of. Your change starts today. Contact Dr. Alan Stephen Leica today for your coaching session. There is limited availability, so call today at 844-936-3362 or go to our website at www.dralanleica.com. Change your life today. When you take your car in for an oil change, a good mechanic will also take care of other routine maintenance to make sure your car runs safely and efficiently. Protecting your health isn't much different. When you get a COVID-19 vaccine, it's important to make sure you're also protected from other serious but preventable diseases. It's easy and convenient to get other routine vaccines at the same time as a COVID-19 vaccine. So make sure you ask a healthcare professional about other vaccines you may need to maintain your health. You know, those are, you know, there's two separate skills there. One is to market your business mm -hmm. and the other one is to do your business. And the two are somewhat different. Oh, yeah. Um, but the good thing I can say about the trade industry, everybody know how hard, it, in my opinion, is electrician, kind of hard. A HVAC guy, they'll come and do a little service. But a plumber is hard to come by because we're so busy and so many calls. So I do understand what you're saying. My father only advertised once in the Yellow Pages years ago. He's never advertising it. Everything that comes to him is word of mouth because he does such a good job. And when people need a plumber, they're going to refer you if you do good work and you come on time. So you're right. Um, a young person that's a nobody, he's going to have to do some advertising. And while he's advertising, he's building up that reputation. But once you have the reputation, I've seen where guys are retired and still getting calls because people need a good plumber or tradesperson. It's huge. Now, Charles, this show is called How to Live a Fantastic Life Show. So how do you, Charles Chadwick, live a fantastic life? Um, I'm going to take a little keynotes from your books, uh, from your book. I would say, first, you got to learn to love. In life, you have to learn, as Clint Eastwood said, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think for, for me to live the best life, I had to learn to love, learn it all, learn the bad times, learn the good times. And when you have that love in your heart, it kind of makes every transition, dimension, levels of your life that much more better. Uh, number two, I would say the attitude. My attitude at an early age has always been, how can I learn? How can I get something out of today that I didn't learn yesterday and just having a positive attitude, you know, it really goes far. And it's kind of like energy. We all can walk in a room, you kind of eavesdrop what people are saying and you could just see their attitude. And I always heard our, you know, the attitude will take you to the altitude of your life as well. And empowerment. Um, I felt so compelled, man. I've always loved to help people. And I kind of like the news. They talked about this student loan forgiveness. Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard. And I said, let me empower people. You know, I, I did the college thing. I'm not saying it was bad or good. But right now, during the pandemic, because I was in the trades, I was able to work. So I said, maybe this message is needed. I wouldn't say worldwide, but I know in America, there has been talks. And whenever I ask people about it, they said, Charles, you're on to something. This message needs to go out that, you know, it's OK with a degree, but don't overlook the trade industry. And I guess you really haven't had a lot of young people in this industry. And since I'm kind of in that age bracket, that's what empowerment I'm trying to let people know that you do not have to go to college to be successful. Yeah, that's huge. You know, I think it was David Goggins that said 
the only thing that is more contagious than a bad attitude is a good attitude, which, oh, which yeah. I think is really significant because truly it's easy to have a bad attitude and share yeah, it around. Yeah. But that good attitude, picture how contagious that is. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's very contagious to the point, again, like I said, people can see your or your dementia or even now in this podcast. I see what frequency you're operating from. You see what frequency I'm operating from. And it, it feels good to be around positive people. You know, it's like energy charging the soul. Yeah, I, I, I think that's why I do this show and I get so much out of it as I'm always getting a lot from my uh, from my listeners. And I'm also getting a lot from my guests. You know, it's easy to do a show like this because all you have to do is step on the shoulders of giants. And, and that's what I look at my, my guest as, truly giants, because they've learned a lot in their lives and they're sharing it with our listeners. Oh, yeah. And what other good time after what we've been, you know, the year 2020, 2021, man, I, I'm ready to talk some good news. And that's what kind of motivated me where, why I'm here today on your show. I would have Never thought in a thousand years that I would be out here, you know, talking about life experience and also helping other people along their journey because it's a it's a very interesting transition from high school to the real world. And I think that transition gets overlooked. And maybe that's the reason why so many young people are in debt now, because college buys you some time versus going out in the real world and getting established as far as paying bills and working on your career. So I think that area is always overlooked. Why do the young person so much in college? I mean, it buys you some time. You get a roof and a meal and you get to study and party. What other better way is it before you step, quote unquote, to the real world? Yeah, that's true. And I think people will always uh, grow uh, if they're, they're given that opportunity. And I always tell people it's not what happens to you. It's what you do with what happens that's so important. Because, you know, along the way, life is going to throw curveballs at us. It is. It really is. So, so pivot with them. Learn from them. Get on with them. And, and take a higher path. Yes, uh, exactly with me. You know, uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick example. You know, uh, when I went to the university, after my financial aid package was awarded, I was short a couple thousand. I was like, like most, hey, I'm going to just ask my dad. I know he'll co-sign. I get to go to college. I remember telling my dad he took the pen and he almost signed it. And then he scribbled his name out and he thought about it. He said, you know what? You should have had your own credit established by now. So if you want to go to college, you pay for it yourself. And I was like, wow. And I guess through that experience, my dad did give me a life skill. That's, I mean, he took care of me. He showed me plumbing and I was able to go to college. I ended up calling the financial aid lady and said, hey, my parents won't co-sign. Can you give me a loan? I know it'll be more interest, but I really want to go. So that experience was like a curveball and I took it. And it made me so self-conscious of my college expenses that I didn't get in a lot of debt. And I'm now debt-free because of that. So when life throws you a curveball, as they say, give us lemons, let's make lemonade and keep it going. For sure. So, Charles, how can people find out more about your book? How can they get it? How can they find more about your world? Okay. Uh, you can just go to my website. It's just uh, Chadwick's, my last name, C-H-A-D-W-I-C-K-S, and then experience with an S, chadwicksexperiences.com. And if you want to see the social media, I'm always posting little tips about how to cut college costs. Follow me at Reduce College Debt. Charles, I can't tell you how much I really enjoyed having you on my show and sharing with our listeners your knowledge and your experience. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here on our show as well. And please check back often because we have some phenomenal guests. Bye for now. You've been listening to How to Live a Fantastic Life with your host, Dr. Alan Stephen Leica. If you love the show, be sure to share with your family and friends. We are heard daily on this network. Dr. Leica wants you to live your best life. Visit coachingwithdrleica.com and book your free 15-minute discovery call today. 
Remember to pick up your copy of The Secrets of Living a Fantastic Life today at Amazon.com. Until next time, have a fantastic life.